more news to get into more news to get into this obviously concerning my dear manchester united so as you can see here coach of sky sports news bruno fernandez Man United captain's red card in defeat against Tottenham has been overturned after successful appeal. Man United's uh, Bruno Fernandes was shown a straight red card during the side's 3 0 defeat against Tottenham. The Portuguese international midfielder caught James Madison with a challenge just before half time. Fernandes faced three match ban in the Premier League. So, this is a good thing, obviously, because even at the time, most people, most fans, most neutrals would have said that the challenge that Bruno Fernandes did on, on James Madison was not a red card. At most, it should have been a yellow. Because he slipped, and as he slipped, he was kind of trying to reach out and get the ball. You kind of saw what you're trying to do. You're trying to do that kind of that hook challenge where you can kind of like slip and still try and hook the ball with the instep of your boot and try and bring it in your direction, but he completely missed. And as he was trying to hook the ball, he kind of slid and essentially hit James Madison really high on his shin, which in any other challenge would obviously deem to be a red card. But because he slipped and he saw what he was trying to do, it should have been a red card. It should have been a yellow. And he also didn't connect that hard with him either. And in general, it just wasn't a red card challenge. It might have been yellow, but it was never a red card challenge. Especially not a straight red card. Um, maybe if he got like a second yellow, he couldn't have complained. But to get a straight red was fucking insane. But I'm one of those fans who actually was happy he got sent off. Because I felt like he was playing terrible. And I also felt like the red card would have given, would have given sorry, Eric Ten Hag an opportunity to play somebody else in that position. Because Eric Ten Hag, for some reason, refuses to drop Bruno Fernandes. He never gets dropped. He never gets rotated. He rarely gets subbed. And at, my, at this point, it's becoming really frustrating because he's just not good enough to start every single game like this and depend on him like this because his levels have dropped. Once the goals and assists dried up, he very rarely has contributed much to the United team. He really, very rarely impacts games. He loses the ball too often for me. Um, even though that's his style of playing, he likes to always look for the ball over the top and kind of, you know, have runners running in front of him to kind of aim for. I personally don't like that in my midfielders. I want my midfielders to be a lot more cultured. I want my midfielders to be a lot more cute, to be a lot more possession based to be a lot more purposeful with their passing to have a lot more of an idea on what the whole pitch is looking like to maybe dictate the tempo of the game or to effectively play like how Jay Madison played you know against us where he was kind of popping up all around the midfield but he was just keeping things ticking over he was kind of the glue that was kind of binding things together and then in crucial moments in the in you know further up the pitch he could influence it by popping the ball around the corner or popping the ball over the top or basically initiating the attack but Bruno Fernandes he always looks for the big hopeful ball he tries he basically he plays hot potato with the football too much for me and i don't personally like that um i also feel like he gets too much freedom in united i feel like when he goes to portugal you see a different version where Bruno Fernandes plays for his national team he's very disciplined he's clearly under instructions not to do what he does at united but for some reason at united he's allowed to do whatever he wants he runs all around the pitch he presses defenders he's fucking slide tackling there doing this wasting all of his energy and then when he gets on the ball he's looking for the big hit and hope over to Rashford or to Garnacho Ahmed and stuff and I fucking hate it so I purposely I really did think this was a, uh, a blessing in disguise him getting a free match Premier League ban because it would force Eric Ten Hag who to this point hates substituting Bruno Fernandes to play somebody else play Ericsson play fucking you know play Mason Mount whoever just play somebody else because at this moment I just don't understand this really reluctance to not rotate Bruno Fernandes this is ridiculous. Like, no other top club does this. No other top club has a player who just plays solely based on their name and reputation. It doesn't happen that way. You have to earn your right, earn your keep. And if you are paying the reputation, you have to be one of the high caliber, you know, Ballon d'Or level players like the Ronaldo's and Messi's. Those are players maybe you could justify playing based on their reputation alone. But even them, I think you're doing a disservice to the squad harmony and to them as players by just playing them based on their name. You have to all your players have to earn their keep. And at the moment, I feel like a lot of players in the team, or maybe two who are we're carrying basically in Rashford and Bruno, are solely playing on their name alone and not playing on the necessity on necessarily on the strength of their fucking play. So as much as this is a good thing, because obviously the red card was not a red card. Uh, I think it's a bad thing because we're going to just see Bruno Fernandes for the next two games now. We're not ever going to see a little change in the fucking makeup of our team. And um but I also would wonder what happens to the referee, because this is such a this is not even like one of those like contentious decisions. This is such an easy decision. Like I understand why the referee got it wrong in the moment, because in the moment when it happens, it does look like a red because he's lunging in and he kind of touches 
the middle of like Jade Madison's shin, which is a, basically a dangerous tackle. And it's reckless. But when you look at it back on the replay, you can see Bruno Fernandes clearly slips. At one point, he's trying to like get in front of Madison, try and hook the ball around from him. Then he slips and he tries to improvise and hook the ball away from him. But instead, he hits his fucking shin. It's clearly a slip. It's clearly a mistake. It's clearly not intentional. So if you were saw on the on the on the VAR system, you would have clearly been able to reverse your decision. But for some reason, again, like referees in this country or just in general, maybe the Premier League especially, they get it wrong on the pitch. But then there's some there's this weird code that referees have now where they don't want to show each other up. So even though he got it wrong on the pitch, his boys in the VAR room don't want to show him up. So they don't recommend he goes to the VAR. They say, nah, it's fine. You got it right. There's no error there. And they keep it going. So, no, there was an error. We understand why he got... The, like, I always thought VAR would be a system where you could help referees make the right decisions. But instead, I think the referees see VAR as a way to kind of show up how bad they are as refs. And they don't want to be shown up. So they'd much rather get a call wrong, have their other VAR refs stand by them and say, yeah, it was wrong, so what? We're going to stand by him. And they keep it going that way. But it's like, no, that's not the reason why we got VARs to make sure that we limit mistakes because some mistakes can have a untoward influence on the game. Don't get me wrong. Bruno Fernandes being sent off against Tottenham Hotspur didn't mean, wasn't the reason why we lost. We would have lost anyway. If we Bruno Fernandes stayed in the pitch, I still think Spurs would have scored in the second half quite soon after the restart. We would have never won that match. But it did influence the game. And red cards have influenced many a games not giving certain challenges, not giving certain goals. So VAR was meant to stop that sort of thing because you don't want, you know, easy enough decisions that could be checked over on video not be checked just because you want to stand by a referee. So in this instance, where the referee got it wrong and the VAR staff got it wrong, do they all get demoted? Do they all get a week's pay docked or something? What happens? There's no real, like, you know, recourse. Like, there's no real deterrent for this sort of thing. They do it all the time. It's just, it's a bizarre way to do things. That really doesn't make any sense. But regardless, he's back. Cool, he's back. Cool, he's back. We also got news courtesy of MUFC MB regarding Ericton Hogg's comments prior to our game against Porto. Here's what he's saying. So this is us, this is him talking to the press. It's like a process as always. You play a game, you analyze it, you draw conclusions, you continue from there. <sighs> process, 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 bro. Like United needs to, United needs to kind of, United need to United need to get to a point where we just figure out that modern day football isn't what we want it to be. We have to exist in the world as it is, not as we want it to be. And this idea that we're gonna find another manager like Sir Alex Ferguson who's going to give us long uh, lasting success and be at the club for like decades and decades, it's not gonna happen. Most clubs don't have that luxury. Most clubs have to go through managers to figure out who the best manager is. And there's no process. The process is you try and get the results and the performances right now. If you don't, someone else comes in. There is no long-term process. Another one. Um, it's by watching the video of the match that you see where the problems are. You find the solutions to these problems. How many times have I watched it? Only once. <laughs> Honestly, is he like mentally unwell? It's by watching the video of the match that you see where the problems are. You find solutions to these problems. So you'd imagine, considering our start to the season, considering how we ended last season, considering how where we ended last season, you think there's a lot of problems, right? So you think you'd be watching the video a lot of times to make sure you can figure out what the problems are, address them, and make sure it don't happen again. When did you watch? How many times did I watch it? Once. I fucking hate this man. Sometimes you go back a little bit to understand better, to go deeper, but only once. So you only rewatch. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a nobody. And I've rewatched that game in four twice. I've watched the highlights of Match of the Day twice. I've seen clips online on social media a dozen times. And I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm nobody. So you're telling me the coach who had us losing 3 new at home to Tottenham easily. To a team that wasn't even playing that well. To a team that had Yves Basuma and fucking, what's his name? Uh, Saar on the bench. A team that played one low midfielder in midfield in Bentaco, who beat us 3-0 easily. You only watched that game back once and I've watched it back four times. Okay. My opinion on the match v Spurs and the bad performance. 
We have problems and I have to solve them and give them solutions to the team. Inputs on no window. Oh my god, this guy is like honestly, he drives my nuts in his communications, like his press conferences, and when he speaks to the media, it is gaslighting, isn't it? I always feel like he's gaslighting the fans. Like he's doing this to us on purpose. He's trying to convince us that what we're seeing isn't what we're seeing. It's perfectly okay. It's that me it's that fucking meme of like everything's perfectly fine and the whole house is on fire. That's essentially what he's doing to us. Ayrton Hag. My opinion on the match v Spurs, a bad performance. We have problems and I have to solve them and give solutions to the team. What problems? The most important thing is to always keep the faith. It is by keeping the faith that you stay in the faith. We're going into games with faith and prayers now. Faith. We are literally in Shala FC. We are literally in Shala FC. I thought that was a myth. I thought that was a meme. I thought that was a troll. But we are in Shala FC. Oh my God. Faith. No tactics, no formation, personnel change, mindset, faith. The most important thing is to keep the faith. It is by keeping the faith that you stay in the game. This is the most important message that we have to convey. Because if you lose the faith, you lose everything. We have to stick to the plan. The plan of faith, the plan of prayer. Yo, this guy is out of, out of his mind. He's out of his fucking mind. We are together. When the players have a bad performance, I have not done my job because they have not played as I expected. We are together and we have to fight together. Even the way he says this seems like he's putting the blame only on the players, which is really strange because he seems like, and again, this is the weird thing about Ayrton Hag. When he was at Ajax, you felt like he was getting the best out of like, I wouldn't say average players, but the best out of players who probably weren't world beaters at that time. But then he comes to United and suddenly he needs the best of the best in every position. He needs the fit. He needs the best player to be fit at all times to play the football that he wants to play. If one player is not fit, he can't play it. Remember last season, there was a time when he was making it seem like because we didn't have Luke Shaw, we weren't playing well. Remember, he was making it seem like because we didn't have Luke Shaw, we weren't playing well. Because we didn't have a fit, left-footed centre-back, we weren't progressing the ball out of defence well. Everything needs to be perfect for him to get his football work done well. So when the players do badly, it's him not giving... Like It almost sounds like he's gaslighting the players. Like, he's a strange manager. And again, I don't understand what happened to him. What happened to that coach at Ajax? He was resourceful. He was able to kind of work with, a, you know, work with what he had. You know? Make it you know, better than the sum of his parts, basically, Ajax. And now he's at United and he's the best of the best. And if those players aren't fit, he can't play. Oh, it's, I can't do nothing. What can I do? What can I do? All my players are not fit. Huh? We Everyone's basically available, except for like what? Lenny Euro and Luke Shaw. No one's injured. And maybe even Lashley. But Lashley's been out for a long time, so you don't really count him. Everyone's fit. Everyone's available, apart from Lenny Euro and Luke Shaw. The players that are, that are available right now are the players that he wanted to keep. Everyone that's not here, he didn't want. So it's not as if like he's struggling for options. He has everybody. He has literally a backup in every position. At least one fucking dickhead as soon as i write okay let's see this other this is another tweet oh he's gonna make me so angry right now mate he's gonna make me so fucking angry god almighty i don't understand what's going on here here's another here's another comment here courtesy of Ayrton hug what are you saying here what's he saying here as soon as i arrived we made choices we had to replace some old players and recruit new ones we chose young players you know what it takes to t you know it takes time to get messages across to get a game model adopted and to induce new culture which takes no it does the thing it doesn't though it doesn't it doesn't take time it doesn't take time i'm sorry and po and at spurs has proved that the new manager crystal palace has proved that kieran mckenna ipswich has proved that not in the forest manager has proved that everyone has proved that emre from where he's taken aston villa has proved that Arnie Slot, from what he's doing at Liverpool, has proved that. It doesn't take that long. It doesn't. It doesn't. You can tell maybe probably from 10 games, maybe even five, you can tell immediately a manager's imprint on the side and how they want to play football. Taking time, taking... If anything, it takes less time with, with young players because they're more malleable and they're more open to instructions and shit and not setting their ways. It actually is easier to coach young players into playing a particular brand of football than it is experienced players who are maybe set in their ways. So what are you talking about? You're waffling. You're waffling. 
and you've created a culture. You, the culture's done. You've created a culture. You've done the perfect culture. You've got rid of all the bad apples. You've got rid of all the fucking bad apples and you've got exactly who you want in that squad. The culture's been done. You got rid of Ronaldo because he stepped out of line. You got rid of Sancho because he wasn't, you know, maybe your type of guy and you butted heads. Everybody you didn't like, you got rid of them. Martial, everybody, they're gone. Scott McTominay, gone. Come on, man. Piss off with this shit. Honestly, he does my fucking nothing. I can't wait until he's, when he's, when he's sacked, I'm going to dance in his fucking grave. I can't wait until this guy's fucking sacked. All the fucking Ayrton Hagas out there, you're going to, you're going to get it from me. I swear to God, I'm going to be gloating in your face when this guy's gone. He's a fucking bullshit manager. And we're going to see how bad of a manager he is when the next club he ends up at. I bet you it's not Bayern Munich. I bet you it's not Bayern Leverkusen. I bet you it's not Juventus. I bet you it's not Inter Milan. I bet you. I bet you it's not fucking PSG. Watch the next club this guy ends up at. It'll tell you a lot about his level. Watch. Because his reputation has been fucking destroyed at United. He might go back to try and manage 20. Or fucking AZ Alkmaar. Fuck this guy, man. He continues here. It takes time. But in the meantime, you have to win. I think we have proven that in the last two years. What have we won, though? He keeps... What? Is he hanging his hat on the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup? The Carabao Cup doesn't count. FA Cup, cool. You got that. Last season. Yeah, final against Man City. We battered them. We actually won. We deserve to win that game. We played fucking well. We should be still playing that same style of play in this fucking season. That same approach, that that compactness, right? That pragmatism, right? We should be playing that same way now, but we're not for some reason. Who fucking knows? But cool, you got that. Carabao Cup. We don't celebrate that shit. We barely celebrate Europa Leagues. Champion Leagues and Premier Leagues only, bro. The Carabao League who gives a fuck about the League Cup. If anything, the League Cup, you, we only won the League Cup, really, if, if quiet is kept. If we want to keep it a buck, we only won the League Cup because he played the full strength team throughout the entire fucking time of the League Cup. I don't think he even dropped Onana. He didn't even, he didn't even drop fucking Onana. He played the same full strength time. And most Premier League teams in the League Cup, they play their youth team. He didn't even want that. He was so desperate to get a win and try to, like, you know, hoodwink the fans into believing in success by playing the full-strength team against, like, league oppositions. Come on, bro. In, on AstroTurf, you're playing a full-strength team. Bruno Fernandes starting against fucking Boreham Wood and shit. Like, fuck off, man. I've proven in my career that I always will win. In the last six years, I have won eight trophies. What, what what are we playing like though we don't score goals you don't know what your best 11 is defenders are all over the gaff no real midfield combination you're fooling our players left and right we've got strikers that can't score strikers that don't get chances created for them wingers that don't create like what the fuck are you talking about bro honestly we have to integrate the game model we have to build stronger teams that one that today uh, one that we have today and to have to work on our problems that provide solutions we have a good p potential and i'm sure that we'll achieve the goals that we have set we won't achieve them with you you motherfucker we won't achieve them with you you'll be out of a job by the end of the season maybe hopefully before christmas fuck you nothing is easy but there's no need to panic yes there is bro we're mid-table how can you not panic now look at the fucking table bro look at the fucking table EPL table. Look at the fucking table. We're mid-table, bro. This is time to panic. We are mid-table. The league is already kind of like jostling into where it should be. All the teams are where the teams were the teams are where they should be at the moment already. They're already jostling for position. Most likely at the end of the season. Most likely at the end of the season, this top five will be the same teams. Most likely. Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea, and Aston Villa. Those will be the same teams in the top five. It just depends on where they will end up position-wise. But I bet you, I bet you, most likely, all of the money in my fucking bank account, that those five teams will be the ones that will end up where they are in the top five. So we're already out of the top four. Top five race. We're already out of it. So now where are we? Look, look at us. 13th in the Premier League, bro. 13th. Are you dumb? It's not time to panic. It's not time to panic right now. No panic now. When should we panic then? At Christmas. We're 13th. 13th. Oh my fucking God. We are 13th. And we've lost what? How many games have we lost already? We've lost five games, three games already. We've already lost three games. We've lost half of our games already. And there's only six games played. We are 13th. It's fucking over already, brother. It's over already. Oh my fucking God. Time is not to panic right now. When should I panic then, sir? God almighty. Nothing is easy, but there's no need to panic. 
because I have experienced it many times with teams during the season. We can solve these problems. The team can solve them. You haven't been... I bet you you haven't been 12th with Ajax. I bet you you weren't 12th with Ajax. Because if you were 12th with Ajax, they'd sack you immediately. Ajax don't play. You were never 12th with Ajax. Don't play games with us. Go get fucked. Lowering our standards like that. We will make this season a success. Yeah, when we sack you. When you get sacked, it'll be a success. Bald fraud. Ericsson Hug on the discussions of Man United's ownership and leadership team in 24 hours. We talk continually. We are talking how we can improve the process. Process, process, trophies, trophies, time, time. Fuck you, you. We are all very impatient. Our fans are entitled to, but we have to definitely, but we, we are definitely as well. We want to win every game. When we are losing, everyone is disappointed. Everyone is frustrated, but it is also our fuel to get, again, whatever, man. Uh, Eric's not going to how impatient he is. Very, I hate losing, of course. Yeah, you hate, you hate losing because people criticize you. You cunt. Ericsson Hogg and how his team are. We are very disappointed. That's normal. But I know them. They are resilient and they'll bounce back. <sighs> Even he doesn't believe it. Look at his eyes. Even he doesn't believe it. Look at those eyes. Even he doesn't believe it. He doesn't believe it. You can tell he doesn't believe it in his soul. Ericsson Hogg and whether there has been a meeting since the Spurs game. We do this every game. We sit together. We give our opinion. There is a two-way communication with the manager and the coaching and the players. We are on the same page. We have to make sure we're on the same page cool um there's a good spirit in a group they keep fighting on sunday you can see that it's a team that wants to fight for each other no they didn't fight on sunday they gave up they gave up the one goal that's the concerning thing the first goal they gave up when fucking what's his face scored they gave up it was actually over by the first goal it actually didn't it was actually over 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 when fucking thingy scored in the second half but it was actually over in the first half when they scored that first goal our heads dropped we didn't react we actually started playing well when we went to 10 men and by the end of the game when Tottenham basically took their foot of the pedal and weren't trying to score anymore. That's when we kind of got back into the game. But the game was actually over in the first 5-10 minutes. That's the concerning thing. That's why you should be fucking fired. When you manage Manchester United, you know that everyone is judging you more than any other club. You have to deal with the criticism and focus on what you are appointed to do. It's about managing the team, getting the best out of them. I'm here to win. You're here to get sacked as well, you prick. Um, on whether he asks if things don't go well this week. I'm not thinking about this. I'm not anxious as well. We are in this together. We made this agreement in the summer with the ownership and the leadership and we're all behind it. We also need a strategy. We also need a strategy of what? What's the strategy? Of young players? Oh, is that thing he said about young players? We also need a strategy about... It's like, bro, man, just get them... I don't care if they're old or young. Get us playing football again, man. I don't give a fuck about this strategy with young players. Like, shut up, man. All fucking excuses. Let us play... Get us playing good football again. Get us scoring goals. That's it. That's what we want to see. This hiding behind trophies while we play bullshit football, while we are fucking horrendous to watch, while we're not playing well at all, while all our good players are looking terrible, while all our good signings are looking average. Like, why is it? All that good vibes and feelings from the signing, signing in the summer has completely evaporated. No good vibes whatsoever. Everyone's feeling gloom. Everyone's feeling down. Everyone's questioning Zersky, questioning Ugarte, questioning De Lit, questioning everybody except for Maswari. Come on, bro. That's down to you. I'm not thinking about this. I'm not anxious as well. You should be anxious because you might be out of a job. Maybe he's not anxious because technically if he gets fired, he's going to get 17.5 payout before the end of the season if he gets fired. So obviously he's not going to be anxious. But fuck you, bro. We are all in this together. We made this agreement in the summer with the ownership and leadership and we're all behind it. We all need this strategy. Young players in transition period and this process can happen. How long have we been in transition? We've been transitioning since you got the job. We're like, oh my god, this shit never fucking ends. They also know that there's always gonna, there's always been trophies at the end of the day. My last season, six seasons. That's what we're aiming for. <sighs> Even if you, if he wins another trophy this season, FA Cup, or the Europa fucking Conference League, and we finish thirteenth, you definitely should get fired. Fired, fired twice. Even if you think you can hide behind a trophy, finishing thirteenth in the league with that fucking squad and the money you spent, six hundred million. 600 million plus and it's okay to finish mid-table because you, you win a trophy go fuck yourself honestly go and fuck yourself and i think that's it because i don't want to get more angry i want to i need to move on now oh yeah yeah i fucking hate this guy honestly i fucking hate him i really can't wait for him to leave 
One member of the Eriksen Hulk in the circle described United's defending for Tottenham's goal as pathetic with concerns repeat the same mistakes in the next two games will end the Dutchman's being sacked. You should be sacked now. It should be down to two games. You should be able to save your, your career because of two games. It should be done because of what we've seen for the majority of his time at United. It's just been poor. It's not lived up to the fucking expectation. We all thought more of him, but he hasn't lived up to it. Just let him go now. Let him go and let's move on. I fucking hate the guy, man. I fucking, fucking hate the guy. But again, what do I know? Absolutely nothing.